This is Philly Drone Tech with Tom Brunt. Thank you to our sponsors, Wistia.com, Zoho Mail, and GetFlywheel.com. Hello and welcome to another episode of Philly Drone Tech here on the phillytech.org netcast network. I'm Tom Brunt. Well, I only have a couple of stories for you this uh, this episode. Um, for those of you that have uh, followed along from the beginning, I'm a broadcast technician. So what I do is I travel with the big uh, tractor trailer production units uh, covering mainly uh, broadcast level sporting events. So as I'm recording this, uh, we are right in the middle of March Madness. So the madness will take me out on the road for a little while. And so uh, uh, in light of that, I just have a few stories for you. So uh, let's get right to it. And uh, let's, as I always do, I talk about the FAA. The only story I have for you this week uh, concerning the FAA is, um, well, it, it, it's a little bit of good news for Amazon. Amazon was just uh, awarded an experimental airworthiness certificate. That means they are allowed to uh, use uh, their uh, drones, uh, UAS, uh, to experiment with their delivery system that they want. Um, However, I'm not sure exactly how far they're going to get with this because, as I've mentioned previously, until these new rules uh, that they've proposed become law, they are basically doing it old school. They're doing it the way that they have been doing it, which is, um, you know, a lot of, you know, pretty hampering, pretty hampering uh, requirements. Um, the again, the, the the person operating the drone in the case for Amazon, has to have a pilot's license. Uh, they can only fly during daylight hours in visual range, meaning that uh, there's no autonomous, which is th the point of what Amazon's trying to do with the delivery drones. So uh, not only that, but uh, because it's an experimental certificate, uh, as it says here, it requires Amazon to provide monthly data to the FAA. Uh, the company must report the number of flights conducted, pilot duty time per flight, unusual hardware or software malfunctions, any deviations from air traffic control or instructions, and any unintended loss of communication. They're required to report that to the FAA uh, in as, as terms of the experimental airworthiness. Um, again, I, I'll, I'll have to research this a little further, maybe in a future episode, but uh, I'm curious as what Amazon is going to be able to do with these restrictions because it's it's kind of defeats the purpose of what they're trying to do, which is the uh, the autonomous delivery uh, drones that they would like to work on. And even the new rules for the FAA do not allow for uh, autonomous uh, control. Uh, re re it, it relies on there being an operator that can see it line of sight. So uh, we'll see how far things go with this, but at least it's, yeah, I guess in Amazon's uh, you know world, at least it's something. So, uh, Speaking of autonomous, though, let me uh, go to my next story, uh, which is uh, NASA is working on, and they have been working on, a, a, a basically an, an automated air traffic control system for drones. Uh, they've, been, they've been working on this, and it it's, could be ready by the end of the year. So uh, this is one of the things I'm going to... Uh, put in, in my public comments to the FAA is that they should really consider this technology sooner than later because it could be here by the end of the year. Uh, what, it, uh, what it amounts to is basically uh, they're, they're partnering with a, a, an aerospace company called Excellus. And what they're using, they're gonna use the existing uh, cell uh, tower network and some of their own additional antennas basically to provide a real-time tracking system for all uh, aircraft and UAS drones. Uh, the, the drones will communicate to the cell towers and the planes will communicate to the cell towers and you will be able to get a real-time display on say a tablet to tell you exactly what's in the air right above you and they will also know that your drone is in the air as well. So this is could be the beginning of a system that allows drones to autonomously uh, use this data to avoid uh, interfering with aircraft or other 
other drones or buildings and what have you. So, and again, they're, they're hoping to have this together uh, by, could be by the end of the year. So I'm hoping that the FAA can, uh, you know, if, if, if that does happen, that the FAA will kind of take that to heart and maybe consider that they should include some sort of uh, autonomous use uh, for drones because, like I said, the technology is to do it is going to be here sooner than later. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. So uh, anyway, that's, uh, those are the stories I have concerning the FAA. So I'm going to take a quick sponsor break and then I'll uh, come back and we'll talk about some uh, life-saving uses for drones. Today's show is sponsored by Wistia. Wistia is a video hosting and analytics platform that helps businesses get the most out of online video. We use Wistia here at fullytech.org. Flywheel, a managed WordPress hosting platform built specifically for designers and creative agencies and helps thousands of designers across the world launch projects every day. And by Soho Mail, professional low-cost email with business class features and security. Okay, welcome back. Well, um, the story I have for you to uh, finish off this episode uh, is concerning uh, life-saving use for drones. Uh, two countries, uh, two countries that you, you wouldn't think of, have uh, are simultaneously developing drones to be used as uh, lifeguards. Um, uh, the first one I have for you is in Chile. Uh, Chile is uh, developing drones, a company called uh, Green Solution. Uh, hopes to have them ready by next summer. Uh, the, the drones will be able to be launched from the beach and can deploy a uh, life preserver out to the ocean and it includes a camera and microphone uh, and speaker to be able to communicate to the swimmer and give them instructions and get feedback on them. So uh, the beauty, I mean, this is a perfect application for these for, for safety. Uh, imagine uh, the speed at which they can get out to a swimmer versus a, a lifeguard uh, is just going to be amazing. And uh, Chile is uh, hoping to have that done now. Uh, but uh, it reminded me of a story I heard uh, a couple months before that. It was in the fall. Uh, an Iranian company known as uh, RTS Labs uh, is uh, probably going to be the first one to market uh, drones for lifeguard use. Uh, this one, as you see here, here's a, a video that has uh, multiple, multiple life jackets and it's kind of deployed the same way. Um, however, they are also working on uh, using it at nighttime, uh, which is something that is very difficult for uh, nighttime uh, lifeguards to be able to do. Uh, in, uh, it was influenced uh, by the fact that in the Caspian Sea in Iran, the, uh, they've had over a thousand deaths over a four-year period of, of drownings uh, in the Caspian Sea. So in that in that region of the world, uh, this is expected to be like life-saving. Again, uh, a beautiful use of the technology. The, uh, the drones can get out there far quicker than any swimmer could, and they could basically mean the difference between life or death until the swimmer gets out there. Uh, there's, there's your life preserver. So it'll be interesting to see when these countries get that uh, technology deployed, and even more interesting, when will we get it deployed in the United States? So that's about it for uh, stories I have. I told you it was going to be a, a short show. Um, so uh, next, uh, hopefully I think the next show, uh, which will be in April, I will, if you have a DJI Phantom, um, I did a full upgrade of my Phantom, uh, what's called the 1.5 upgrade, where you kind of combine it into the shell of the Phantom 2 and you can use bigger batteries and you have more space inside to put extra components and stuff like that. So I'm going to go over, uh, I fully documented it and I'm going to basically discuss that. So if you have a Phantom, you will probably want to check this, this show out. Um, and as always, you can uh, contact me through my Twitter account at DroneGuyTom. Or you can reach me at email at uh, droneguy at tebweb.com. That's T-E-B-W-E-B.com. 
And as always, uh, every the, I'll provide a link to everything that I talked to I talked about on this particular episode and all episodes on uh, my Medium uh, account, and you'll see the address there down at the bottom of the screen. So every link that I talked about today and in all shows, uh, you'll be able to access directly from that. And uh, one more thing, uh, we are uh, the phillytech.org. Uh, website is uh, is on uh, Patreon and what we're looking for is uh, well we could uh, use your help we could use uh, financial support to help uh, kind of keep the uh, keep the server fans uh, buzzing as I like to say so uh, there's uh, there'll, there'll be a link up on the screen uh, as well for for that and uh, if you feel strongly about the, the podcast that you see on this network and would like to see us grow um, we uh, we appreciate your help so thank you and that's it, folks. I told you it's going to be a short show. So uh, I'll um, see you next time.